welcome back to my channel and welcome to a brand spanking new guitar review. We are going to take an in-depth look this week at the Jackson Dinky HT7 in baked ash blue finish. In for testing, we have the seven string model. This guitar is also available in six string, as well as multiple different colors of this sandblasted finish, as well as fixed bridge and Floyd Rose options. Nobody has asked me or compensated me to put this video together. This is strictly my own content and my own unbiased opinions on this guitar. So this is one of Jackson's newest models, and this is squarely aimed at, I would say, the modern guitarist. Jackson as a brand goes all the way back. They've been around a hell of a long time, and they have a reputation for producing kind of mostly rock and metal focused instruments. Jackson have more recently been acquired by Fender, uh, which doesn't seem to have done them any harm whatsoever. Their output has still been really good. Um, just looking at their 2022 range, there's a huge number of models, loads of different crazy colors, as well as your standard stuff. So they currently, as a brand, seem to be thriving. Now, this particular guitar represents kind of the upper price range of what Jackson offers. So the retail price of this guitar is just over a thousand pounds in the UK, kind of 1100 quid roundabout there. Um, you may be able to get it slightly less if it's on sale. Now being over a thousand pounds, you would expect the specs to be really damn good, and they are. Now up and down this guitar, you have high quality name brand components, starting with the fixed bridge. This is a proper hip shot bridge, extremely comfortable, intonates really well, very high quality bridge. We have Fishman Fluence open core pickups. We have proper Lumen Lay side dots on the neck. These are not the knockoff glow-in-the-dark dots that um, some guitar manufacturers are starting to put out now. These are genuine Lumen Lays. Lumen Lay is its own company. And these ones are extremely bright. They're the green type. You can get various shades of blue and green with Lumen Lay. Now this is a 26 and a half inch scale length, which I think is, you probably wouldn't want to go any less than that with a seven string. It's about right, I would say. 27 inch I personally prefer because you get a bit more string tension and just a little bit more clarity because the strings are just responding a bit quicker. But 26 and a half, perfectly fine. Heading on to the headstock, we have stainless steel frets and ebony board. We have a proper Graftec tusk nut and we have really nice locking Goto machine heads, super high quality. They look really nice as well. Really finish the guitar off nicely. Now, look at that finish, I hear you cry or at least that was the response I got when I posted some pictures up of this guitar on my socials. This is a look that has um, only come around in the last few years. Now, this is known as the sandblasted effect. So you have deep open pores and ridges of wood on the guitar's body that have been filled in with colored paint. Now, I think it was Mayonnaise who first perfected this look. 
Mayonnaise were certainly the first um, guitars that I saw with this particular effect on the finish. Um, and every manufacturer now seems to be jumping on the bandwagon right down to court with their ultra affordable KX300. Check out the review of that guitar on this channel. It was just unbelievably good for the money. Now, the finish on this guitar, now that I've sampled a, a couple of sandblasted ones, I have to say this is done exceptionally well. Um, it feels ultra high quality. And it's important to point out that what you get by spending a little bit more money on this versus something like the Court KX300 is the sandblasted effect goes all the way around to the back of the guitar. Now on more budget guitars I've seen with this particular effect, uh, the sandblasted finish is strictly limited to the top of the guitar. Now this entire body is sandblasted, even the headstock is done to match as well. And I have to say, I really like what Jackson are doing at the moment with their headstock logos. Now, a lot of manufacturers out there, um, they kind of sometimes put stickers or just really like wank looking like low quality kind of uh, branding on the headstock. Now this has a really cool 3D effect headstock to it that looks super nice um, and really premium. So um, if you look at Jackson's range this year, they are starting to move towards doing that across all of their kind of mid to upper range guitars. I think it's such a nice little finishing touch. Now in terms of controls on this guitar, we have a single volume, a single tone that's also a push-pull pot. We have a five-way selector, so we have a choice of two different voices on each pickup, and we also have the option of coil splits on each pickup. So in terms of versatility, at least on paper, this thing is just massively capable in terms of like a spectrum of tones it can give you. So then, I absolutely love the way this thing looks. I think it looks extremely smart. I think it looks extremely expensive. Now, how does it sound? Say, I feel like this guitar is a bit strange. Now hear me out on this. Now Jackson, as I said, have a reputation for producing mostly rock and metal focused instruments. So when I ordered this guitar, I thought, ah, brilliant. I'm getting a full blown seven string chugging metal monster. But I have to say, due to some of the pickup and hardware choices on this guitar, I actually don't feel like I've gotten that. I've gotten something slightly different. The pickups on this guitar are Fishman's Open Core Classic pickups. So really, these are just Fishman Fluence Classics, but with a, a traditional open core design instead of like an active soap bar or something like that, all right? I'm very, very familiar with the Fishman Fluence Classic pickup. I had a set installed in my Schecter C1 for a period of about six months. My ear is very educated as to what these pickups can offer. 
Now, as opposed to Fishman Fluence Moderns, the classics are meant to emulate vintage PAF and hot rodded tones. So these pickups are more aimed at people who want to retrofit more modern pickups into vintage guitars. These are not really aimed at your modern kind of metal players. So what does that mean? Well, number one, it means you get just beautiful clean tones out of this guitar and you get four or five different beautiful clean tones out of this guitar thanks to the various voicing options and the coil split options. On the neck pickup you have a vintage PAF sound with voice one and on voice two you have more of an overwound hot rodded style pickup. Either one just sounds beautiful, clean, just so um, pleasing to the ear. So I did find myself mostly playing clean tones with this guitar because when it comes to the bridge, I'm looking for something super high output. You really are looking for sort of clarity through compression with a seven string pickup if you're playing metal, in my opinion. Now, whilst these pickups are brilliant at what they do, they sound great as PAF or hot rodded tones, they wouldn't be my first choice for playing metal with. Now, take a listen to this. Here's me playing a riff on the Jackson HT7. I'm using voice two on the bridge. Straight after, here is me playing that exact same riff using voice two on Fishman Fluence Moderns. <laughs> Now just listen to that little bit of extra compression and output. It's just bringing out those drop A notes just a little bit better. It's pushing the amplifier just a little bit harder. I think overall, a bridge pickup like that would have been a far better fit for this guitar. Just to illustrate, how much these pickups are aimed at your kind of Les Paul users or at least vintage solid body users. Fishman even make them available in zebra finish, which is the cream and black, which is just classic like 50s and 60s guitars. Now, if they were aimed at like chugging gent modern metal players, I don't think they would have brought them out in a zebra finish. Something else that's a little bit of an oddity about this guitar that um, I can't really wrap my head around is this is Jackson's dinky body shape. So this is seven eighths of the size of a full scale soloist or Jackson's standard S type shape of guitar, right? So the idea behind that is it's just smaller, slightly more comfortable, lighter, so it's less fatiguing for you to play stood up. Now, despite all of that, this thing is properly heavy. <laughs> this is a bolt-on construction, which usually means it's lighter, but man, this is one of the heaviest seven strings I have played. I think the reason for this weight is the body is really thick. I mean, look at the chunk on that. This is probably due to the fact that in order to get the sandblasted finish, you have to have enough depth in the wood for the ridges and to have basically enough room to get all the paint in. Now, unfortunately, this has kind of negated the fact they've made it a dinky body shape. So I feel like they may as well have just gone on to make this a soloist, really, because it's really heavy regardless. So the pickups are a little bit mismatched. 
The guitar is a lot heavier than you're probably expecting. Now, how is it built? Well, this thing knocks it out of the park in terms of build quality. I can't find anything to moan about, and trust me, I am always on the lookout for something to tear down with guitars when I review them. The fretwork is just completely consistent up and down the neck. There's no sharp edges. The nut is not the best I've seen. There is a tiny bit of a gap on the neck side, but certainly nothing you're gonna feel when you're playing it and nothing really that I don't think is within sort of default quality at this price point. As I said, the finish on this feels really nice. There's such a tactile quality to like the ridges on this guitar that you just kind of find yourself stroking it. In terms of how this thing is screwed together, this is as good as anything I've played at this price point. And seeing how this is manufactured in Korea, I have to say that this continues the tradition of just anything I play that comes out of Korea is just shit hot, really. I think when you're shopping around the kind of thousand pound-ish price point, they're easily on par with, you know, most of the stuff I've played that's come out of Japan. Now, whilst the build quality is exemplary and as good as I've seen at this price point, I do have a little bit of a moan to make. The price of this guitar, 11, 1200 quid, I've seen it retailing for in some places. Can we please just have a gig bag? Like, I know we're not gonna get a hard case for that sort of price manufacturers. Like, those days are, are dead and gone. Yeah, I understand that. But could we at least have a gig bag, please? Like, this is like one of the most expensive mass-produced guitars Jackson put out, yeah? So um, I'm afraid that's kind of a minus point from me, Jackson, for not including a gig bag with this. And it's especially disappointing when you see other manufacturers such as Legator, Solar, uh, you know, they're including gig bags with guitars that are actually coming out under a thousand pounds now. So please, gig bag please, Jackson. So in summary, really nice guitar proper premium build, premium features, slightly strange decision on the pickups. As I said, if I was gonna keep this, I would probably swap them out for something more metal focused because that's what I play. And I think if you're out in the market for a seven string Jackson guitar, odds are you probably play metal too. What do you guys think? Should I keep this and swap the pickups out? Should I chip it on and see what else I can get on my seven string journey? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Thank you once again for tuning into one of my videos. If you found it entertaining or useful in any way, think about chucking me a subscribe, or better yet, think about supporting me via the buy me a coffee link in the video description below. Until we meet again, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one.